How are we doing folks? Not my usual motorbike stuff, but um had a bit of a, not a trauma, but uh, we have the Freelander 2 and it's had the noise from the back with for a couple of years now. So I uh, changed the two rear wheel bearings last year because it wasn't a big job and I think it was like 35 quid for a pair. So I fitted those the noise was still there. Swap the tire, you know, the normal stuff, swapping tires around. And the noise, the wine got progressively worse. So obviously now I pulled the axle out yesterday and uh, I'm going to do the, it's going to be the pinion bearings obviously, which is a common fault on them. Uh, but I've obviously now had to order the tool because there's no way you're going to get that pinion nut out without the special spline tool and the 41mm deep socket so that's on a back burner while the special tool arrives but while I've got it out I think it's done about 56, 58,000 miles and uh, this Haldex unit which they say you don't need to service apparently you do so I had a look online and all and uh, what I did find was yeah there's a filter in here that we change but a lot of people have been taking the pump off because there's a filter on the pump as well and they've been virtually clogged up so there's no point if you're going to put fresh oil in it and put a new filter in it not to take this off <coughs> however to do it in situ you've, it's just a mess this has got a vibe. I don't think they all have this. This one's got the vibration damper on the outside of the prop. If you didn't have this on, you'd be able to take this off. But you've got to take the vibration damper off, and obviously, you've got to take the prop shaft off. Well, I had to take the prop shaft off anyway, obviously, to take the diff out. And let me tell you, that prop was frozen solid or rusted solid in here. And this is not an old. It's uh, one of the last ones they made, I think it's a 13 or a 14 plate. And uh, it took me about two hours to get this off, soaking it in plus gas, penetrating oil, etc. And apparently on earlier ones, there's two holes in here that go through and they did have threads in. And you could put like an M8 or an M10 or whatever the thread was and you could jack them off or jack the prop shaft out this has got the two holes but there's no threads in it so you can get an M8 bolt and a long brass drift bang bang give it a knock turn it 180 knock and eventually you can walk it out but uh, what a job like you know that was the hardest bit was getting the prop off so anyway while it's off we're going to clean this filter as well so I've got to get this off. So um, it's just a straightforward thing. It shows you you can get it off with a an air gun, which we've got. And uh, going back, it's I think it's 130 newton meters of torque, but it'll just be going back with a windy gun flat out. So we'll just pull that off as to make a start. Twenty-two, no. Twenty-four, twenty-four, twenty-four will do it. So there's air in the tank of the compressor. Let's make sure we go in the right way. Bit of noise. Ooh. Lock tight. So obviously it's going to have to go back. Oh yeah, there's a lot on there as well. Obviously it's going to go back with Loctite. So it just show this flange just uh, <laughs> Oh yeah. 
apparently the flange just taps off and I can see Loctite down there uh, so uh, I don't want to I don't want to bash too hard on this because obviously it's rubber mounted isn't it the vibration damper uh, so I've got some of the lines up Are, uh, are he said yeah I think that maybe I've been lucky. No. Obviously, this is going to go. <laughs> Obviously. Come on, baby. Okay. Yay. They're long bolts, aren't they? That'll do. Some washers. And I wouldn't like to uh, do this in situ, pulling this thing off, but. Well, looking uh, at the ones that they've opened up, that filter on the pump, there's no point to do to change the oil and the service without cleaning that filter on the pump. And there's obviously a Loctite in them as well. Remember, I'm coming off. Okay, is that 19? Yes. Can I hold that with this? Tight, bloody tight. Yeah, we'd like to just come in. That's got Loctite down the splines that I can feel it. There you go. I can feel it.
Yeah, Loctite down the... They've obviously put Loctite on the nut and it's spilt down onto the splines. That's probably... Won't be going back with Loctite on the splines, but it will be going back with Loctite on the uh, nut, obviously. So, four millimeter, four mil. <sighs> yep, this might be too fat to get in there actually. Oh no. We're away. Come on, baby. Okay. <laughs> no chance. Okay. Might be able to just, I've got a soft drift. Brass drift, and there's a little lip you can by the look on it. Bloody hell. Let's go in. God, that's tight on there. Whoa. We're off. Plug. Okay. Let's have a look. Still not there. Wow, look at that. Look at that. Look at the piece of o-ring there as well. Look at the stuff on there, man. <laughs> that is nearly blocked solid. So uh, I'll take that off, that filter off is detachable obviously. I'll give it the brake cleaner treatment, an airline and see how it goes. The rest of it looks okay. So those two Allen keys are off there. So the fill, this is the bit that you don't, that you normally just change, just this filter. So again, we're on um, four mil X Allen key. Yeah. 
they long enough for what? <laughs> Holding the crown wheel in place. <laughs> yeah, they're long enough then. <laughs> Mind you, they look the same length as the pump ones. Yeah, they've obviously done it. So you can't get the screws mixed up then. You certainly don't need them that long for this, do you? So, if I just do the same again, there is somewhere to, to get to there, a little ledge. Oh, that. Oh, there's nothing holding it, is there? Oh, that's just a. Uh, the growth on there, the bauxite or whatever it reverts back to aluminium. So that's just a plate to that, no seal or nothing on there, that's just pushing down on this thing here and that is absolutely full of that white stuff that's got to come out is it? white powder growing everywhere <laughs> got a bit of a spray I think So I don't know whether this is just a cap or is this the filter? I don't know. <laughs> it doesn't want to, whatever it is, it doesn't want to come out. That's obviously the uh, aluminium going back to its original state, bauxite or whatever it is. And I'm going to I'm going to break this because that is tight. Yeah. So I'm going to leave it to soak a tad more. And if, obviously, you get that in the kit, but it would have been nice for it to come out. But I think it's uh, looking at the state of everything on here that water has gone down in between those faces and there's a couple of o-rings I think on this and uh, it's obviously furred up, swelled up and gripped the uh, gripped the filter or the plug or whatever it is. So we'll, we'll switch it off. I'm going to leave that to soak while I fight with this. Okay, we're back. Um, what I ended up doing was I uh, drilled a very small hole in here and put a self-tapper in it and uh, did a bit of overkill but I need to make this for another job because I've got to get that big oil seal out the bottom of here and obviously I'm not going to get that out with a pair of tweezers. I'm going to need some heavy duty kit so I'd made this anyway for this but I, obviously just a quick slide hammer and that pops out and the verdigris, it's not verdigris, that's copper isn't it, the changing back to bauxite or whatever aluminium does, it's all grown down right up to the o-ring and that's why when you buy the kit they give you a new one of these because they probably know that you're not going to get it out without smashing it up 
and I just looked at the kit online don't know why but you get this aluminium plate as well it's only a bit of a waste but yeah so we're down to the filter so we just want to pull that out <coughs> Jeez. <laughs> Not with them. <laughs> Snap ring pliers, if I go down the middle, get some grip with them. Come on, baby. Yes. So there's the filter. Oh, it's a. This couple of different styles whether it's Haldex Gen 1, Gen 2, Gen 3, Gen 4 or whatever it is so you're probably better pulling your filter out first before you order anything because I just looked online and some are only about that big but obviously this is the big boy and uh, not too bad in there Yeah, it's got like a um, paper type element inside. So unlike the one which is on the oil pump, this one, uh, you know, you can't clean it. It is disposable. So that's in the bin. And now I know which one to order, the right one. But I did uh, pull that filter off the oil pump. And, um, you know, obviously clog solid and it is a nylon filter so brake cleaner, airline, that'll come up perfectly. But you need to remove it on this particular one, whether there are any different variants, I don't know. You need a super small torque bits. I think that's a 10 or whatever. So you need a uh, super small torque bit for that. You don't need to do it but I couldn't help myself. I had to have a look inside because I can. And wow this is a beautifully made pump. I mean I know it says Haldex but uh, it's Borg Warner isn't it? Borg, Borg Warner is the parent company. Probably designed by Borg Warner and all the rest of it. Don't know where the Haldex bit comes in. But when you take this plate off, there's a little radial um, swash plate, like six piston pump inside there. Oh, like a Swiss clock. So I've seen inside for you, you don't need to take that off because it takes a bit of effort putting it back. But that's now just going to get cleaned up. Filter's going to get cleaned up. New filter ordered. I know you get this as well. You have to destroy that to get it out. Probably nine times out of ten. But just looking down where the pump sits. The crud that's in there. I mean, we don't do a great deal of, um, you know, it generally just uses a road vehicle, this. We do a bit of towing, a couple of weeks a year with the caravan, but the crap that's inside this is incredible. So for 56 or 58,000 miles, whatever it's done, you know, when Land Rovers say you don't need to service this, let me tell you, you absolutely do. And uh, it's well worth it because I think things like this is the accumulator for the servo and all that. It starts to stick and you get like juddering when you pull away and all kinds of stuff. So it's well worth new oil. No service kit. And I just now I've got it apart, I've seen a little bit better inside. I was just trying to work a few things out. For the amount of oil that's in it, I was trying to work out where does all the oil go? This from there to there is a tank. And it's separate obviously from inside here. And it looks like that's a core plug so when it's cast. You know, they can take the core out, clean it or whatever. And I was just looking on the whether it's just the Volvos or it might be the Audis because the Audi 
Audi's use them as well. Some of them have a plastic tank which bolts on in place of this. So yeah, there's a lot going on inside here. Uh, but anyway, when the tool turns up, that's another job. I've just got to get the oil seal out somehow. Maybe with my uh, little tool that I've just made. But obviously this will all be cleaned up. New filters, it'll go back. Bit of Loctite on there. These are a very low torque, and they're 15 newton meters or something. 130 for this, but it'll just be the rattle gun. But it's it is important after seeing this, 56, 58,000 miles, that the service filters and oil is very important. So might catch it if you're interested when I come to try and get this uh, pinion bearing out of here when I get this special tool but that'll be on a separate video next week because the tool doesn't come till Monday weekend coming up now so we'll catch it again guys hopefully you got a bit of mileage out of it and uh, if you've got one of these get it serviced <laughs>